Mads, and today I'm going to be doing a kind of interesting take on a TBR video, and that is I'm going to be giving myself a list of books that I would like to finish before the end of 2018. It feels kind of crazy that we're at the end of the year already, but I have not read hardly anything this year. That's probably because uh, school has just been insane. The first semester this year I took 18 hours and I also had a new job and then I worked all summer and also took classes and then this semester I've been working and then I've also been doing this like insanely massive research paper where I had to read all these academic journals and sources and I've literally just had no time to read for myself, I've had no time to do anything fun. The paper is over, and also most of my schoolwork is coming to a close. Like, it feels like we're three weeks into the end of the semester, there should be more happening. But for the most part, apart from, like, reading for class, I, I don't have anything. <laughs> like, I'm free. I'm done. It's such a weird, liberating feeling. And so what I wanted to talk about today in this video is what I want to accomplish before the end of the year. And it's not going to be all reading, but it is a lot of reading. And I'm so excited to get back into it I literally have not had almost any time most of the books that I have read this year though I've just I've absolutely loved them but it's just been a long process and I'm really really excited to be able to do this again the TBR pile that I've given myself is a little bit of an ambitious one and that's because I have like a month and a half to do all of this but also like I said I have a lot of free time I'm anticipating a lot more free time and so I, I don't know, I think I can do it. I might not hit every book on this list, I might hit different ones, but I am feeling very motivated and very excited, and I'm really stoked for this pile, this mountain that I've picked out for myself. So the breakdown is a little bit weird. Seven of these books... Yeah, seven of these books are completely unread. The next six are books that I started and am somewhere between a third and half of the way through and then put down either because school got crazy or work got crazy or for whatever reason. None of these were like intentional, I don't feel like reading this kind of books, but one way or another they got put to the side and there's been a couple of these that I've been trying to read for over a year now. So that's the second pile. The last two are going to be audiobooks. Um, the reason I have audiobooks is because A, they're cool, but I don't listen to them most of the time. But something that I'm wanting to get back into and is my first goal for the end of Christmas is that I want to get back into weaving, which was my favorite hobby there for a long time, and I had to put it down because it is very time consuming. And what I want to do is read these two audiobooks, like play them through my radio and weave as I go. I think that'll just be a really nice, calm experience to be able to weave again and still read. The other thing that I want to do is I want to do at least three drawings a week. Art is another thing that I was very, very passionate about for a while and put down. and. I want to be drawing <laughs> as much as possible. So to accomplish this, uh, I'm setting my goal of three drawings a week. I want to just, even if they're small doodles, just try to slowly inch back into it. So without further ado, let's uh, start trekking this giant book mountain I've made for myself. First I want to talk about the two audiobooks that I want to finish by the end of the year. Uh, the first one is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. Uh, this is a book that I have been listening to on audio for a few months now. Like, I was listening to it there for a while, and then I stopped driving so much, and I started listening to podcasts instead, so I haven't listened to it in a little while. Uh, but I loved it. This book is really funny. It's really interesting. I think it's very relevant today. Um, the kind of story that Trevor Noah has had throughout his life, and just, like, listening to him talk about growing up in South Africa is heartbreaking, but also really amusing and poignant and passionate and I loved the book so far. I think I have about 4 hours and 45 minutes left on this audiobook so I can definitely get a lot of weaving done for that. The second audiobook I'm wanting to complete uh, before the end of the year is a free one that I think I got last year from Audible when I was still subscribed to them and it's called Gather Round the Sound and it's a collection of short stories from um, big authors, I guess? I'm not quite sure what it was, I just picked it up because it was free and because we're going into the Christmas season I figured it would be really fun. Uh, the only author that I can see on the very like limited <laughs> summary that it gives me is Paolo Coelho, but um, 
I work in a bookstore and a lot of people love his work, um, but they're Christmas themed, uh, they're in spirit with the season, and I think this audiobook is like an hour and 12 minutes, so easy to knock it out. Um, I guess the next thing to do is to just start trucking along on this book mountain that I've given myself, so uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go. There's a lot of books on this pile, so I'm not going to really go into depth about why I stopped reading them, but typically it's the same reason, and the first one is Toil and Trouble, which is edited by Jessica Sh yeah, Jessica Spotswood and Tess Sharp. Uh, this is an anthology of witchy stories, and it has some really good authors in here. I know Elizabeth May is in here, Zoraida Cordova, uh, Anne Marie McLemore. Like, there's a lot of authors in here that are really great, or who I've heard are really great. They're just different takes on witch, mo on witch tales, <laughs> and uh, I've read I think two. Uh, I put it down again because school got crazy, uh, but I really love these, and I think I want to read like one a day or whatever going into Thanksgiving. The next book that I really want to complete by the end of the year is A Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. This is a book that I was probably, arguably one of my most anticipated releases of 2018, and then when I got it, I got it a little bit early, and then I started reading it and realized I remembered like nothing from the first two books. Um, but I loved this series a long time ago. Like deeply deeply loved it. My first review ever posted was a review of the second book, A Torch Against the Night. Uh, it's not very good. I don't recommend watching it. I can't do it anymore because it's very cringy. However, I was very excited for it and I just don't remember very much. Like, they were just talking about events and I was like, <sighs> so I, I put it down. Um, but I have heard really good things. My friend borrowed it and she said it was just a wild ride. I love the new covers, so again, one I want to finish. The next one might get a few pitchforks my way, and that is Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. It has been two years since I started this book. I got, I'd say very close to halfway done with this. The first act sort of ended, and they started setting up for the second act, and it was kind of slow, and I was like, well, you know, I'll take a break, and then I'll just pick it up in a little while. A little while became a little bit longer of a while, and then I went to a book event, and people started talking about Crooked Kingdom, and apparently there's a character death in here. I don't know who. If you spoil me, I'll block you. But, like, a, a character death that's making people very, very upset at the end of this book and I got really afraid and I've been putting it off because I don't want to find out who it is. I care a lot about these characters. I love them very much and I just don't want to see anything happen to them. I'm really worried but I think it's really time for me to just overcome that because King of Scars is coming out in January and it's about my favorite character and I'll probably really need to know some of this that's happening. I don't know. I need to finish it. It's time. Uh, I'm just gonna have to swallow all my fear and move on, be a big girl. The next one I started reading during the 2017 Booktubeathon and I got incredibly burnt out of just reading because I had read so much so fast and I just couldn't deal with it anymore and then I just, I've never gone back to it even though the third book is out in the series and I just so, I'm so hyped to finish it. And that book is Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the sequel to Illuminate. Everybody knows what this is. Again, I got about a third of the way through it and then I put it down. Um, but it's time. <laughs> you know, it's time. I feel like that's gonna be what I say for everything. Uh, the last two are very high fantasies that I have been putting off partially just because of the investment that high fantasy take, but also because they're really big and the hype kind of got away from them for a little while for me. Uh, the first one of these is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, and the other one is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. What I have read of both of these was absolutely stunning. I started both of them while I was taking 18 hours of school and I ended up putting them down because I just didn't have the time to invest in them and read books that were a little bit faster or shorter or required less like mental investment but I have been literally dying to finish both of them for however long it's been since I started and so I'm just gonna bite the bullet and take it up now. And last but not least we have the books that I have not even started a little bit of but want to finish because they are books that I was either really anticipating either at one point or really anticipating right now, things that I feel like I should have read by this point, whatever. Uh, ooh, I got my necklace in my shirt. The first of these is Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. I bought this I think about a year ago uh, and I've heard nothing but wonderful things about it and I, like I said, with everything I just haven't had the time to give it but it's one that I'm really excited for. I've literally, again, heard nothing but good things. It'll be a great read for this season. I'm kind of in a witch mood anyway so I think it'll be cool. The next one was a Christmas present that seems right up my alley and that's The Crown's Game by Evelyn Skye which is a Russian-inspired fantasy about two magicians 
I guess, battling for prominence? I'm not quite sure what it is. I don't like to be spoiled too much before going into the books. But again, this seems like a really cool, atmospheric, wintry type read, and so I think it'll be great for this season. Next, we're sort of getting into the pile of books that I'm really kicking myself to finish. Uh, the first one is Furyborn by Claire Legrand. This is an arc that I was so ridiculously excited to get at the North Texas Teen Book Festival, but I didn't read it before the book came out again because of finals um and i still have not read it again have heard nothing but great things about it uh, have been eyeing it for the longest period of time and now we're finally there and i'm just ugh, it just looks so cool uh and it seems like a really unique interesting story so i'm i'm excited to get to it the next two books are ones that came in book boxes that I signed up for in October, and the first one is Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve Tcholke. This came in the Beacon book box for October, I believe. I am ridiculously excited for this. I don't know, I read the first few pages, I don't know if I got all the way through a chapter, but the writing is gorgeous and atmospheric, and I already really like the protagonist, and I'm interested by several of the other characters, so I think this is just going to be a really wonderful, like, cold, kind of scary, dark book to read for this winter. The next book that I got is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Ngan. This was in my fairy loop for October and it is an Asian inspired fantasy about a girl who is forced, I think, to be in a harem. I'm not quite sure what it is exactly, but she's forced to go live in a castle and serve a king and she doesn't want to and they're sort of fighting amongst each other and also have to band together and that seems like an absolutely fantastic story. And last but not least, we have possibly my two other most anticipated releases for this year that aren't a Reaper at the Gates. And the first one of these is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Uprooted is absolutely one of my favorite books of all time, and this is like Rumpelstiltskin with powerful female characters. I'm so here for it. I'm so excited about this, and so I have to read this. And lastly, I have Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. This is a continuation of The Remnant Chronicles, which the first book of that is The Kiss of Deception. Also one of my favorite fantasy trilogies of all time, and I'm so excited to return to this world, and I think our protagonist is a thief, which is absolutely just right up my alley. So that has been my end of the year goal TBR thing um, for 2018. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.